Hello, everyone. Hopefully you can see me and hear me. If you're not familiar, familiar with Zoom, um, there are some controls down at the bottom of your screen that you can adjust your audio. Um, you're not going to be able to use video, um, but and you're not going to be able to speak at least at, um, at this point during the webinar. But uh, I'm just going to wait for a few more people to trickle in. We're having people signing in. They're all popping in one after the other. So welcome. I'm just going to wait a minute or two before I get started. All right. Well, we'll still probably have a few people trickling in, but I want to welcome you into my kitchen. Thank you for joining me today and being a, a, a part of my day. And um, this is also known as the Plant to Platter Kitchen. My name is Chris Kalinich, and I am a culinary instructor and nutrition educator based out of beautiful Sedona, Arizona. And wherever you are tuning in from, I have registrants from all over the state, and I have registrants from the West Coast to the East Coast. For, so thank you, thank you. It's very exciting. This is my first live virtual cooking demonstration. And um, thank you for being a part of it. Um, I do want to let you know that this is the first uh, class, virtual cooking demo class in the series of three. I'm doing this series on behalf of Earth Month. And usually I'm out in the community teaching or I have people coming to me for customized cooking classes. But as you know, we are pretty much throughout the country and throughout the world really trying to stay at home and, and be safe and uh, continue to be healthy. So this is my way of um, hopefully uh, giving you a little bit of something to do during your day, and it's actually giving me purpose. So thank you for allowing me uh, to be um, uh, a part of your day. As we go through this cooking demonstration, it's actually 45 minutes, so it's a bite-sized class is, like, is what I like to call it. I typically give classes from an hour to two hours. So I'm crunching in a lot of information in a short amount of time because I recognize in this type of format, it's hard to keep people's attention. So I can't read your body language. I, can't, I don't know if you have questions, but the way I will know if you have questions is um, to use the question and answer box on your um, iPad, or not, excuse me, not on your iPad, on your desk, um, computer desktop. It should be right around here that you see a Q&A a um, box. Feel free as I'm going through the demonstration, if you have questions about ingredients or a question about what to maybe substitute or do instead of, feel, you, feel free to use that Q&A box. If you're on your iPhone or iPad, I think it's more up in the upper right hand corner of your device. So please use that versus the chat feature. Um, let's see, what else? Um, also at the towards the end of the class the first two thirds is me doing the cooking demonstration the final third is where i am going to be answering your questions and if i have to stay a little bit after that's fine but i do want to respect everyone's time and try to be done in about 45 minutes we are going to be doing two recipes and that sounds like a lot in like 20 minutes or so but that's what i love about these particular recipes and i designed this class based on feedback i got from you when you filled out the registration form that was part of the purpose of that registration form was to allow me know to know how to design this particular particular class and to understand my audience what was really exciting for me is of all the registrants and i think i have about 80 at this point is that about a third of you are eating 100% plant-based. About another third of you are, are really trying to center your plate so that it is more plants and less uh, having animal products on there. And the other third are really kind of what I call the veg curious, the people that maybe know they need to eat a little better or maybe a lot better, and they need to know how to do it. So this class will hopefully enlighten you and also teach you a little bit, not only about um, human health and how we, why eating plants is so good for human health, but also about planetary health as well, because April is Earth Month. So let's start celebrating together. Um, what I'm going to do is share with you right now uh, our first recipe that we're going to be doing. And it should pop up on your screen. And this is an easy bean salad recipe. And you'll notice that 
It's designed by, um, or the source that I got it from is the Cancer Survivor's Guide by Dr. Neil Barnard and some of his wonderful staff, registered dietitians, Jennifer Riley and Susan Levin. And they are all based out of Washington, D.C. with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And I am a Food for Life instructor with them, and I'm able to teach their award-winning curriculum. And because of that, I have access to some wonderful recipes. The reason why I like this particular recipe, if you notice, it has a lot of, uh, lots of beans in it. And when you become, start eating more plant-based, you are gonna focus, um, your protein sources are really gonna come from some different items versus animal products, such as meat, fish, chicken, and, and eggs and dairy. It's gonna come from plant-based sources and beans are a wonderful source of protein as well as fiber. You'll notice in the other ingredients here, there is an Italian, a low-fat or fat-free Italian salad dressing. And that's where the other recipe is going to come in. We're actually gonna be preparing uh, a salad dressing to use in this particular um, dish. And then at the end of this recipe, it gives you some particulars about the nutritional um, quality per serving. Um, this recipe makes 10 servings and once I, um, complete it for you, you'll see how much, uh, how filling it will be because it, it makes a whopping amount of salad. So I'm going to stop sharing at this point. And what I'm going to do is we are going to switch over and we're going to look at the wonderful ingredients we're going to be using in this recipe today. So as you can see right here in front of me is I have um, uh, the um, beans that I was showing you in that recipe. And don't be alarmed, you're gonna get this recipe um, in, within about 24 hours. You'll have both recipes delivered to your um, email box. And so you'll be able to um, uh, see how much to use and that kind of thing. So you, you don't need to be madly writing down. But what I've done here is I've used one can of rinsed and drained kidney beans, one can of pinto beans, one can of black eyed peas. And now that's what's in this bowl right here, those ingredients. If you cook them from scratch, you would use one and a half cups of each of these types of beans. Now the beauty of this salad is that, let's say you don't have these in your pantry right now. Maybe you have some white cannellini beans or white northern beans. Just swap out with what you have on hand. And it will still give you the same, relatively the same nutritional quality, the same amount of protein and fiber, and uh, be very filling as well. Now the other type of bean that I'm gonna add in here are these beautiful lima beans, but what else could you use instead? Well, you could, you could use, let's say, edamame, or just another type of bean that you have on hand. You could use twice the amount of pinto beans if you wanted, if you didn't have any of these um, uh, lima beans. So I'm gonna just dump that in here Now, I'm going to just quickly stir to incorporate these so you can see it's starting to look beautiful already. But what we're going to add to this, because beans are very, they have a kind of a creamy texture if they're done right. You never want al dente uh, beans. They should not be hard and really firm. They should be nice and smooth um, uh, in texture. And they add richness to a dish. But you also need, when you are developing plant-based dishes, you are wanting some other things going on uh, in your palate. So think about your taste buds. You want a little bit of sweet, maybe a little bit of salty, a little bit of sour, things that add more dimension to whatever you're eating. So if we just ate beans, that would be rather one-dimensional and boring. So what we're going to add now is we are going to add a cup of what was frozen corn, but I let it thaw, or you could defrost it in your microwave quickly. If it was summertime, you would um, be able to maybe use fresh corn, which would be just right off um, the corn cob and be able to put right into um, the dish. What the corn is going to do at this point it's adding some extra hydration because beans on the tongue can be a little drying. It's gonna add some fresh, crisp hydration as well as a touch of sweetness. Now, we're also gonna add 
some wonderful red bell pepper. This is, they say in the recipe to use one red bell pepper. And this is a lot of red bell pepper. Um, this was actually a six inch long red bell pepper. And I thought, I'm not gonna save any of it. I'm just gonna use the entire thing in the salad. Okay, I'm gonna give it a quick stir. And as you can see, it's starting to look very multicolored. And that is letting you know that you are actually getting a lot of dis different nutritional um, qualities and whatever you're eating. With plants, color really dictates a lot of uh, different nutritional benefits that you receive. So with plant foods, um, you will get not only you know, the macronutrients you need, the, pr the protein and the carbohydrates and the um, uh, healthy fats, but you're also getting wonderful vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients and um, uh, antioxidants. And so the rainbow that we're starting to see here really is letting us know we are going to really feed our body well. Now, the next thing we're going to have here is a purple onion. And this purple onion, if you were in my kitchen, you would smell it. I took the lid off and wafted right up to my nose is this powerful uh, smell that we associate with um, the allium family of uh, vegetables. And that consists of onions of all types, green onions, purple onions, white onions, uh, shallots, garlic. And so that sulfur smell is uh, definitely very powerful. And if you don't like a, um, what they call for is a half of a red onion, and this is, um, and they said a medium-sized onion. This is a little bit more on the large size side, but this is about the size onion I use to get half an onion. For me personally, I would probably not use the entire thing. So since I'm gonna be feeding my husband and I here with this salad, I would actually use just about that amount. But you, if you love onion, you could throw it all in there. And that is gonna add, uh, a wonderful taste to this salad and some depth. If you um, are sensitive to onion, and they do have um, wonderful uh, uh, immune boosting qualities to them, if you're sensitive to them, you know, just use a little bit or you can um, soak them in some cold water and take some of that initial sting, I like to call it, out of the onion. And so it can be a little bit more um, palatable to your whole digestive system. All right, at this point, we've made kind of what I call really the salad, the base of the salad. Now what we're gonna do is introduce the salad dressing. Now let me just flip over back again so you can see me. And let me just talk a little bit about salad dressings. Um, I particularly, um, don't buy, purchase salad dressings in the grocery store anymore. And the reason for that is one, they are, they can be super pricey, but if you flip over the back of the salad dressing uh, container and you start looking at what's contained in the salad dressing, it's a lot of things you may not know that you're actually consuming or hiring, uh, and it's usually very high in calories. And the main reason for that is it usually has a lot of added oil and a lot of sugar. And so for your health, what you want to try to do, uh, an easy way to um, help with cardiovascular health and maybe increase your insulin sensitivity and manage your weight is really one of the things you could easily swap out and st is to start making your own salad dressing and have it be oil free. Because if you weren't aware, one tablespoon of any type of oil has 120 calories. And that's a lot, when you think about your putting it on your green salad, you typically don't just use one little tablespoon of any type of salad dressing. And so you're put, drizzling it on there, not knowing that you're probably getting hundreds of calories um, and it's kind of nulling out what you're actually eating. You're actually um, consuming uh, unnecessary calories and why not just make it, your, uh, make it on your own and make it the flavor that you want to make it. And so let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to um, also just share real quickly 
the recipe. So this is an oil-free vinaigrette recipe. And it's one that uh, is found, actually it's, it's on my website and I'll have a link to it in the email that's gonna be following up with you. But you will notice that there's a lot of options here. We, you can use white wine uh, vinegar or red wine vinegar or balsamic vinegar. This uh, ingredient here, I will show you when I get um, switch my camera over, but if you're not familiar with what nutritional yeast flakes are, this is an item that allows you to um, have some uh, extra kind of cheesy, um, uh, savory flavor to your salad dressing. And then um, uh, there are also, we're gonna use um, a little bit of salty in our vinaigrette with, we're gonna be using low sodium tamari or coconut aminos. And I'll be showing you these ingredients as I'm demonstrating the recipe. But you'll notice there's not a whole lot here, but it's gonna add a lot to our easy bean salad when we combine it with the already, the sweetness of the red onions, the yellow corn, and um, uh, the, on the onion, the red peppers, and the yellow corn. So let me stop sharing that. And it looks like I have a question here. For friends who can't eat onion or garlic, is there something else I can substitute? I realize it wouldn't have that particular flavor, but there's something I can sub for interest and contrast. Thanks, Patsy, for asking that. Um, so if they can't eat onion or garlic at all, sometimes what I do if they're very sensitive, um, I don't know if it's an allergy you're talking about or if it's the digestive issue um, that you're referring to, sometimes just using onion powder or garlic powder, people are able to tolerate that better. But if you have to completely avoid onion or garlic, um, uh, do you mean anything, Patsy, out of the allium family? Because I would suggest maybe using a shallot instead or keep, you can completely keep it out entirely because there's going to be enough depth of flavor with the other ingredients that I don't think you're going to miss it um, at all. So maybe try that. That's what I would do because I am sensitive to onion and garlic. So I don't use a whole lot. And if I don't have it, then I just don't use it. So thanks for asking that. All right, let me flip back to my, so you can have a spotlight video on the salad. And I'm gonna make a quick transition here. And while we're doing this, and the camera is not on me, it's on uh, the, the food here, I do want to do a little visualization exercise. And I was going to have some polls, interactive polls, to make this more interactive for you at home. But Zoom is having some growing pains. They are really trying to, I think, um, uh, take care of all of us because we're doing so much on video conferencing that they are having some, I think, technical issues. <laughs> and so their polling is not working correctly. So what I'd like you to do by a vis visualization exercise is Close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to think of an acre of land. And if you don't know what size an acre is, think of a football field. An acre is a little bit bigger than a football field. And as you're sitting there and you're thinking about this acre of land, I want you to recognize that um, in, to feed a person who, can, who eats a typical American diet, a meat eater, it takes three entire football fields or three acres, maybe a little bit more, to feed them for an entire year. Now, keeping your eyes closed, I'm watching you all out there, you have to have your eyes closed. Now, if you are, become vegetarian and you cut out all meat products, with the exception of eggs and dairy, but you're eating more plants on your plate, you have just whittle down how much land it takes to feed you for a year. You are now down to a half of an acre. If you eat now completely plant-based, no animal products, no meat, no fish, no poultry, uh, no dairy, no eggs, you're only consuming the healthy benefits of a plant-based diet, 
you only take a sixth of an acre to feed you for an entire year. So open your eyes now. We're gonna focus back on the dressing, but do you, can you understand, start understanding how we can, the more plants we put on our plate, the better off we are not only helping our human health, but we can help the planetary health as well. So I just wanted to throw that in there before we move on to the next recipe. Um, one thing you can do for, um, uh, in regards to planetary health and well-being, helping out Mother Earth, is try to repurpose things that you have in your, um, uh, from what you are purchasing at the grocery store. By that meaning, this is actually an old salad dressing container. Like I said, I haven't bought any for a long time, but this is one I now use for my own salad dressings. And this glass bottle I've filled with, um, a cup of the balsamic vine uh, vinegar that I'm using for my salad dressing. So I already put it in there because I was afraid I was going to spill it all over my counter in front of you if I didn't do it ahead of time. But you could have used a cup of white wine vinegar, a cup of uh, uh, red, um, red wine vinegar, whatever you choose. But today I'm using balsamic. And then what I do is, because it has a nice opening, I am going to use a funnel, and I bought this nifty little wide open funnel where I can add all the other ingredients. And so I am going to add for the savory kind of cheesy quality, this nutritional yeast flakes. And nutritional yeast flakes, if you aren't familiar with them, you can get them at any health focused um, grocery store, like a Whole Foods here in Arizona and around the West, we have natural grocers, there's the Sprout stores, wherever you might be in the United States, I'm sure you can find them at a health focused grocery store. And you can order them off of amazon.com or vitacost.com. Um, and they just are um, these little cheese, like it's hard to see, but little flakes, uh, of deactivated yeast. And they're just going to add a nice rich um, flavor to my balsamic vinaigrette. So I just dump that in there, three tablespoons worth. If you really like it cheesy, you could add more or you could add less. The next um, ingredient that we're going to um, add into this is low sodium tamari, or if you had soy sauce, you could use that. You can also use this product called coconut aminos. And that actually is soy free and gluten free. And it's a little bit lower on the sodium content than um, to even tamari or um, soy sauce. And it has, it's a little bit sweeter too than the other saltier tamari and soy sauce. But um, those are ingredients, those are the options for this category of ingredients. So I'm adding in um, the three tables, or excuse me, two tablespoons of. Um, the low sodium tamari. Now I am going to add in um, my two tablespoons of maple syrup. I'm opting for maple syrup, but you could use agave or date syrup. And this is adding now a sweetness. So we have the sour kind of tartness of the vinegar. We have the savory, cheesy flavor, the nutritional yeast flakes. We have the salty from our low sodium tamari, and now we're adding the sweetness of maple syrup. And now we need some zing. I always love zing. I love Dijon mustard. And that is like um, an ingredient I always have well stocked in my pantry. I always have a backup because I use Dijon mustard in a lot of different types of dressings and sauces. And so I am using Dijon mustard. You could use a stone ground mustard. Um, I wouldn't recommend a yellow mustard because that's just, um, I mean, you could try it, but I think it would actually taste, you would really taste um, just more mustardy um, and not so much the kind of added depth flavor you get from Dijon. Now, that's the basic vinaigrette and I would shake it up and use it as just a really basic vinaigrette in my household. But in this particular Easy Bean salad, they called for Italian. So how do you make a vinaigrette Italian? Well, you can add some Italian dried herbs. And so what I do for my Italian um, uh, 
um, vinaigrette is I add in a half teaspoon of basil, a half teaspoon of oregano, a half teaspoon of paprika, and just a dash of garlic powder. And you can mix them, you can make it your own, you can leave one of those out, you could use Italian seasoning that's already pre-made, and just make it to the flavor you like. But that's what I like to do, is add basil, oregano, and paprika, and just a dash of garlic powder. And then all I do at this point, is wipe that off. is I put my lid on and I say shake away. And that's what you do. And now you've just created, you could have whisked it in a bowl and then put it in here, but I'm all about less cleanup is better. So here is my salad dressing, could be for the week, and I could make different versions of it with different spices and vary them throughout the week and have different containers of um, vinaigrette. Now, the nice thing about this salad dressing, you can actually also heat it up and reduce it down, like put it on low um, in a small pan and reduce it down until it thickens. Um, it takes a while and you need to pay attention so that it doesn't burn because there's maple syrup in here and that kind of thing. So you don't wanna leave it for too long unattended, but you can thicken it up and then it becomes a drizzle for roasted vegetables, steamed vegetables. I love it that way. So that's a suggestion, but what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna incorporate about half this amount because this recipe said a half cup of Italian dressing. This is not just low fat, this is no fat Italian dressing uh, that I've just created. And so I'm just gonna eyeball it. This makes about a cup and a quarter total of vinaigrette. So I am just gonna wing it here and pour in about that amount. And now here we've created this easy bean salad. Now we could leave it just like that, right? We could, and it's wonderful if you put it in the fridge, my fridge is that way. We put it in the fridge and you let it meld overnight and it makes a one, it just, the flavors really combine well and it becomes uh, such a flavorful salad. But we could do more to it. I always say, how do we amp this up? What could we do more to it? And I say, well, let me introduce in some kale. So I used some just four leaves about this size of kale. And I actually used, one of the things we can do to help Mother Earth out is really be conscious of using everything, um, every part of the plant we can. Now, obviously you can't eat or I wouldn't eat the avocado skin of an avocado, nor the seed inside. But when you have something like this, um, I actually, for a really um, uh, textured salad like this, I don't necessarily descale and then toss this away. I use the whole thing. I just really chop it up fine and then toss it in here. And because it's such a hearty salad, and that flavorful dressing, it's really gonna take on and, and kind of help this bitterness of kale. If you find kale to be bitter, it's gonna help neutralize the taste of your kale and tenderize it, even the stock itself. So that way we're minimizing food waste because food waste um, actually is really huge here in the United States. I don't know if you're aware that about 30 to 40% of the food we grow for ourselves here in the United States actually winds up in the landfill. And that's just shocking. Um, and around the world, as an entire globe, we tend to waste about 25% of our food. And so use every bit that you can. If you notice here, this is from my earlier, um, from chopping and dicing, get, preparing for this bean salad. I have a compost little bucket here and I'm composting. And so that's one way you can actually um, uh, help also as well is find out if you can compost uh, either you have someone who has a farm or a garden and you could donate your food um, compost to them. Here in Sedona we have a wonderful company called the Compost Crowd that just started up a few years ago and they come by and they pick up my compost. 
And um, I just know it's, it's, doing, it's doing things better because when you compost, you put off less carbon dioxide into the air than if it just goes directly into a landfill. So just some suggestions in regards to that. All right, now I have this. It's become a, it's a cold salad, right? I could, a couple things I could do to add to this. If you really want to extend it, you have a huge family, let's say. Um, you could add in, for me, for instance, I had some leftover brown rice, um, kind of a wild rice mixture. You could add that into this. Now, as you're adding more things, you may need to add more dressing. That's very true, but you have a lot made in this, in this uh, container, so you could keep adding and building. You could add diced tomatoes to this, a can of diced tomatoes. You could make this warm. Everything that's in here could be turned warm if you wanted to put it into a pot with some diced tomatoes and some extra liquid from the diced tomatoes and the salad dressing, and it becomes a warm dish. You could serve it on top of sweet potatoes. You can, you know, if you're making lunches throughout the week, this could become a topping for, um, uh, you know, putting inside a wrap or on top of a green salad, a typical green salad and add this to make it heartier. There's all sorts of things that you can do with this salad. And then finally, and I'm gonna to get to questions and answers here in just a minute, I'm looking for, oh, I have some other things you can add to this salad. We're going kind of a um, Italian Mediterranean theme. You could add sliced olives. You could add artichoke hearts, all right? Um, this would um, create all sorts of interesting depth of flavor. You could rehydrate some sun-dried tomatoes. You could add into here. Do you see how I'm just like building and building the flavor? Plant-based eating, is not boring. It's highly nutritious and it can be super flavorful. Um, and so I'm going to end here for the moment. I'm going to actually show you what it looks like. It's in this big bowl. Do you see how much it made? 10 servings. Of course, I added the kale, but I just want to show you what it looks like in a beautiful dish. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. All right, let me, let me pop over switch my view here so you can see me. I wish I could see you. Okay. Since the recipe is so big, if I wanted to freeze some, should I freeze it with the dressing on or off? Well, you know, I think you could do either. Uh, nothing in, think about this, a sa this salad dressing is really, um, uh, something that uh, I think anything, it could freeze well. I don't think there's any problem with it because it could actually become a sauce. Like I said, you could heat it up if you wanted. So I don't think there's a problem with that at all. I've never tried it because I tend to eat the, the salad um, uh, throughout the week. So um, I've never tried it, but I think it would work. Do you ever save scraps to make veggie broth? I wish I did. I, I am trying to do this better. I was actually talking to my husband about it. Um, uh, the other day, but I, there's a lot of things I don't, um, I tend to use all of something and I don't have a lot left over. Um, it's usually, if it's an onion, it's like the skin of the onion and that little um, uh, end of it. So I don't have a lot of waste in that regards, but I would like, I, I would like to make my own veggie broth. Let's see, can you use honey as your natural sweetener? Technically, yes, you could, you could. Um, definitely, there are some people who um, eat completely um, plant-based and are vegan, and so they don't even eat honey from the honey bee, but you could definitely use honey if that's not something that um, uh, you have any sort of issue with. You could definitely use honey as a natural sweetener. If you are making a creamy dressing, what would you recommend besides using nuts? Well, you know, some people are allergic to different types of nuts. I would lean towards, like using something like a sunflower seed, um, you know, oh, and let me show you, I actually brought it out. Um, I make tahini, I use tahini in sesame, um, uh, or excuse me, that's a sesame seed paste. I use tahini dressing um, a lot in my salad dressings and it goes well with like Dijon mustard and lemon juice, vinegars, I, I would go for this. 
Could you substitute maple syrup with balsamic gla glaze? Um, Pamela, so the maple syrup goes into the balsamic vinegar. Um, and I said you could reduce it down to make a balsamic glaze. So I'm a little confused. Could you clarify, maybe type in the uh, Q&A, maybe a little bit more what you mean by, could you substitute maple syrup with balsamic glaze? In something that you're making, like maybe roasted vegetables, like roasted sweet potatoes, um, I'm thinking might be the answer to your question. I'm not sure. Reba asks, um, where did you get that cute little funnel? <laughs> I know, it's awesome. I can't remember. I may have, I think I got it off Amazon years ago. It came in a three pack and um, I love them. They're like color coded and they're different sizes. And this one, my husband and I, we just, we just absolutely love. And we got it, whoops, there it is. We got it um, when we were living in Santa Barbara, when um, we were living in Santa Barbara for a year, few years and I got it off Amazon. Any other questions at this point? Your brown rice is perfect. What is your trick to, to perfect that's not sticky? Ah, yes, good question. Um, I have a rice cooker. Uh, my husband got it for me when he uh, was in Japan, oh, like he visited Japan, he was on a work trip. And he came back and that was what he said, so it ain't the perfect rice over there. And I've had it for, gosh, 15 years. And I use that thing religiously for when, when I make rice. So that's my trick is using this rice cooker. All right, um, let's see. What does the poster on the right behind you talk about? Oh, this one right here. So this is actually the power plate and this is one of my, um, uh, the, the power plate that I demonstrate when I'm teaching my food for life classes is that when we are eating a whole food, healthy plant-based diet, we combine it, we make our plate, we try to compose our plate of these four food groups. We have vegetables, legumes, fruits, and grains. And of course, our recipe today highlighted the legume family. And legumes consists of beans and um, peas, such as the black eyed peas we used in this recipe, and lentils. So um, that's what that is about. And then on the other side, I have the nutrition rainbow. And this is just another um, visual that I use in my Food for Life classes that talks about the color benefits of the plants that we eat. So the kale that we ate, or we're gonna eat in a, the salad, has lutein, it's good for eye health, it has folate, and it good, has um, uh, good antioxidants for cancer fighting. It's all sorts of wonderful ingredients in kale. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Dollar Store has sets of three funnels, I believe. Oh, thanks, Lee, for sharing that. That, yes, you can probably find a lot. I love going to those stores that, where you don't have to pay an arm and a leg to, to buy something useful and practical. So thanks for sharing that. Okay, um, let's see. Pamela, I use glaze with my balsamic vinegar to sweeten my dressing with my balsamic vinegar to sweeten my dressing. Okay. Um, I think I answered that question. I'm not sure if I did or not. Okay. Connie, Chris, this was a great presentation. Presentation. Thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate that, Connie. And I know you are a person, if I remember correctly, that lives on the East Coast in New Jersey, I believe. So thank you for joining me. It's definitely later there. So thank you for being here live. Um, how about adding a grain to the salad? Reba, that's an excellent idea. Yes, yes, that's what I, to extend, especially to add nutritional dietary diversity to your diet, definitely add different grains to the salad, whole grains of all sorts, whether it's brown rice, whether it's, um, you know, uh, quinoa, or it could be, there's some interesting grains out there like farro and kamut. There's all sorts of things that you can add to this salad and salad dressing. That would be a great idea. Okay. 
I have been hearing that there is arsenic in rice. Is this something to be concerned about? Well, you know what I would advise you to do? Dr. Michael Greger at nutritionfacts.org, I believe has a video on this very subject. If you go to nutritionfacts.org and just type in arsenic and rice, I bet you the video will pop up. And what it's about is um, you can find it. Typically, um, my understanding is um, London's brand, I believe is how you pronounce it, does not have arsenic is my understanding in their rice. There is some rice that you get, you know, but it's, it's very minimal. If you're eating other things and you're eating lots of fiber that's taking the toxins out of you, I don't think you need to be overly concerned about it. If you're eating tons of rice, then yes, make sure you're eating some that um, does not have uh, any high levels of arsenic in it would be my recommendation. Uh, let's see how, could you use blended flaxseed to make a creamy dressing? You know, fl blended flaxseed, I use a lot. Um, and so, yes, I would say um, that you could add it and it would thicken it because you can make the vinaigrette in the, re in the recipe you'll get tomorrow with the link um, to the recipe. You can add things like uh, xanthan gum or arrowroot powder, just a little bit to thicken it but flaxseed is super healthy. And I would opt, I never even thought about that, but yes, you can make, you could use blended flaxseed to make a creamy dressing. Are you concerned about GMO? Nancy's asking. Um, you know, I really try, I don't like to uh, get super stressed about my food. I really wanna enjoy my food, but I wanna make wise decisions too. So I really try to find things that are non-GMO if I can. Um, I, the research is kind of, um, not really, a, for me, definitive that GMO is super, super bad and will, you know, grow a second head or something like that. But I really try to go for organic if I can. I do try to find non-GMO. Um, certain things I do tend to gravitate towards to be organic, such as soy. Um, I do want that to be organic. But if it comes down to it, the more plants, if you can eat more plants, um, you're going to do your body good. So I, I try not to get too super sensitive about that. So hopefully that answers that question. Okay. Let's see, what else? Oh, maybe you said this, but how large is one serving? You know, I didn't, I didn't measure out. Um, I don't know, I'd have to kind of calculate it out, but it is based upon uh, the physicians committee analyzing it. They have registered dietitians and the chef staff that they put it all into and crunch the nutrition numbers. Um, and so I don't know. I'm guessing it's a good cup in here is a serving is what I'm guessing. What is my favorite spice to cook with? <laughs> oh boy. One that I really use a lot is smoked paprika. I really like that. It adds such depth and and variety to whatever I add it to. Um, I like the smokiness on top of the paprika that I really like that. And then I love cinnamon. Cinnamon and probably turmeric because the anti-inflammatory properties of turmeric, I really like that as well. So um, I wish I could ask everyone th what their favorite spice was. I'd be curious to hear. Let's see. Your site, oh, my website is fantastic and very helpful. Well, thank you, Pamela. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yes, it, it takes a lot of work to maintain a website. Me and my husband do it together and boy, it's it's crazy amount of work, but I enjoy doing it. Are you, uh, let's see here, other ones. Do you have a gluten-free vegan cookbook recommendation? <gasps> oh, my daughter, Megan, do you have one? She's on here, I think. She might have a good gluten-free vegan cookbook recommendation. Let me think on that, Randy. I don't want to have one off the top of my head. And why I'm, ask, I'm telling my daughter, Megan, if she, and asking her if she has one, is her husband has celiac. And so um, they are very much on top of being um, sensitive about gluten in their, in their diet. So I may have to, if you want, um, I could get back to you on email on that one. Oh, Megan responded, not specifically, no to the gluten-free cookbook. Oh, but easy swaps are able. Yes, let me grab the cookbook she's talking about. 
This is one of my tried and true recommended cookbooks for anyone who wants to go and eat more plant-based. Um, my husband and I, we cook out of this a lot and you can see all the, the markers in it and I have never been disappointed. And you can swap out uh, like Megan was saying, so thanks. Have, let's see, Roxanne, have you ever used coconut cream or coconut milk for a salad dressing? You know, not in my salad, salad dressing, but there are ones out there um, for sure. The reason why I tend not to is they can be maybe a little bit um, overpowering, depending what kind of salad we're going for. I definitely like them in, like it could be great in like a quinoa or cold, like lentil type salad. I can see it in something like that. But off the top of my head, I've never really used coconut cream or coconut milk, especially coconut cream. Coconut cream is going to be really intense and really is high in, high in fat and saturated fat and calories. So I typically don't use it in something like that. It's more in a main dish, adding it um, to a main dish sauce. Let's see. Chef Katie May says to soak your rice for two hours to help take out a lot of the arsenic. Have you heard this? Well, you know, I do believe in soaking for that reason, but you can soak all your grains, all your beans, but um, when it comes to grains, it's really helpful because it starts kind of that sprouting process and it can make it more, the, the nutrients, more bioavailable in your system and easier to digest. So I always say soak your grains, soak your beans well. So good point. Do you refrigerate your dressing after making it? How long does it last? Yes, I definitely refrigerate my salad dressing. Um, and uh, how long does it last like a homemade salad dressing? We go through it pretty quickly because we eat at least a salad a day. But I say it, no more than, I wouldn't go maybe beyond a week probably, but it's five to seven days for that particular salad dressing is what I'd recommend. What is the second recipe? Perhaps you meant the dressing is number two. Okay, so let me just share again. Maybe I didn't do it correctly the first time. But this is the oil-free vinaigrette recipe I was talking about, Lee, um, that I made as the second recipe. But I used it in the first easy bean salad recipe that I shared at the beginning um, because it called for an Italian um, dressing. Does it, hopefully that makes sense. And you will, like I say, be getting all of these um, uh, salad dressing or all these recipes tomorrow. And I am going to continue staying here. Um, we are at 245. I'm going to continue answering questions. You are welcome to stay with me and I'm going to be answering them. But in case I have anyone needing to sign off because they're at work, I have a lot of healthcare workers from Northerners and Healthcare that signed up for this class and you may be working and need to bump off and that's totally fine. What I do want to tell everyone so that um, before you, everyone does sign off is a couple things in regards to um, uh, this particular class. I am doing this free. I, I'm learning, this is my first one, and I love to teach, and that's why I'm doing it. And so I'm kind of, what, I'm, what I'd like you to consider doing is paying it forward as well. And there are a lot of food banks, Meals on Wheels programs out there. You know, there's a lot of uh, need out there right now. And if you can, do a donation of some food to a food bank or Meals on Wheels program or a monetary donation. And if you can't, you're one of those people, maybe you've lost your job or things are really tight right now, pay it forward by a kind act of compassion, just a random act of kindness. If you go out, venture out to the grocery store, let someone else go in front of you. Um, if there's two bags of frozen spinach sitting in the freezer section, then don't take the last one. Just take one home and leave the other one there. Just something like that. I just want us to pay it forward. We're all, you're hearing that phrase, all in this together. And I just want to start um, um, paying it forward and, and really being a community. Even though we're having to distance ourselves, let's continue to be a community um, that loves one another and loves our earth. So um, I do want to 
just say that, stay happy, stay healthy, as well as if you are interested, I will have links to my other two classes. I'll hopefully get better at doing this thing, but I'm going to have a kids in the kitchen class Saturday, April 11th at two o'clock and another class, the final class that is a simply scrumptious sauce that can be used in different ways. And that will be Sunday, April 19th at two o'clock and you'll get that information in the email. So, um, Thank you, thank you. So I'm gonna continue answering questions because uh, there are a lot. Let me see if I can get to them all. Let's see here. I'm clicking through, clicking the ones I've done. All right, next one. B, love your presentation, thank you. Would be interested in more of these Zoom presentations. Thank you so much. Well, I let you know about those other two. So um, hopefully you'll be able to join me. And the kids in the kitchen, if you have kids, bring them in to watch the demo. But it's also really for the adults, parents, grandparents, and, you know, aunts and uncles that might have kids at home and they're, you know, trying to um, uh, learn how to make good independent food choice decisions. And we're all spending more time in the kitchen together. So you might as well get together as a family and watch that presentation. So thank you, B. Patsy, my favorite spice, uh, current, oh, you're saying currently smoked paprika. It winds up on just about everything. I agree with you, Patsy. Uh, oh, Lee mentioned uh, for Randy, there's a complete idiot's guide to gluten-free cooking. Very nice, thank you. Oh, She Glows has a really good banana bread recipe. I love Angela Leiden. Uh, she, I have her book right in my, cook. yep, yep, I agree. She is wonderful and her food presentation and pictures are awesome. Are you a fan of vegan cashew ranch salad dressing? You know, I can't say that I'm a fan. I haven't found, I mean, I have found a couple that um, I like and enjoy, but uh, I can't say I'm like, woohoo, it's at the number one top of my um, salad dressing list. I'm kind of still venturing, trying to find and tweaking the perfect vegan cashew ranch salad dressing. So if anyone knows of one, um, I do have a Facebook page. I have Plant Platter on Facebook, my business page, and you can show up there. And if you have a recommendation, I'd love to hear from you there. Um, thank you. Since I've been to some of your in-person classes and tried the recipes you've made, which turned out delicious, I hope everyone watching will give this a try. Thank you for having these demonstrations online while we are stuck at home. You're, oh, you just, I'm not gonna cry, but you made my day. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, David asks, not a question, but just wanted to say, I love this format and I pay a monthly subscription <laughs> after April to attend classes like this. Well, cool beans. Um, that's really something I'll think about. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it, David. Um, let's see. How are you washing your veggie and greens now with coronavirus concerns? So I've, you know, I was researching this. I've been listening on the news, what the medical professionals are saying, what Dr. Barnard is saying. You know, what I'm doing is yes, I'm making sure, even before this, I was making sure I washed my vegetables before even, once I took them out of my um, carry bags, um, I would wash them in my sink before even putting them in my refrigerator. So what I'm doing now is I have like a big tub or a big bowl of warm water. Some of them I will scrub a little bit with soap, but if you take in soap, you can actually, it's not very good for you. So what the health professionals are saying is just really, uh, washing them well with um, water. And if it's like a firm vegetable, I'll scrub it with my little scrub brush. Um, and then I let it dry and then I put it in the fridge. All right. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I appreciate it. What's my favorite Sedona restaurant? Hmm. Well, the easiest one for me to eat at is chocolate tree because everything there is I can I can choose from a lot of things but there are also some other wonderful restaurants um, in, in town there's like uh, Thai spices that serves good Thai food um, and I'm trying to think I don't to be honest with you I don't eat out a whole lot um, my husband and I like to eat eat in I guess you say we like to cook together so I don't get out very much it's, it's kind of sad to say but I will have to say that um, I am having this uh, 
uh, recorded. So um, it should be available to you all. It's uh, um, so I can do it. I didn't make it um, necessarily through a live stream on my Facebook page, but I may be able to do it through my website. So I'm thinking on that. I'm working through the kinks on all this, but you will be able to I think have a link through the follow up email tomorrow. You'll be able to watch it again. Uh, chia, okay, chia seeds would ground would be a better thickener than the air root. Oh, yeah, yeah, you could definitely use chia seeds to thicken a salad dressing. I agree. Um, well, thank you. There's a bunch of thank yous and some recommendations in here. Um, oh, one more. In regards to Meatless Monday, how would you convince more people to try plant-based alternatives? We find most people are resistant. You know, sometimes if we label it with something, um, it, it, it kind of makes it, rather than just presenting the good food and it be plant-based and just say, hey, just try making one of your meals um, plant-based per week. Sometimes people get a, there's, some, there's this opposition of um, it being labeled like a meatless Monday. It, it depends on what your context is. If it's at work, if you're in a cafe, working in a cafeteria and you're trying to promote a meatless Monday, you get pushed back maybe. But maybe it's better just to present that there are these dishes and not label them as like, these are all meatless. Uh, that's just a, maybe a possibility. But, um, you know, you really have to meet with people where they're at too. Um, so don't try to force it on them. Just try to give them flavorful, good food. And a lot of times they start looking at what you're eating and going, hmm, maybe I'll try that. Um, so sometimes it's just living by example, then trying to present and convince, if that makes sense. All right. Well, I think that's it, everybody. We went a little bit over. It's almost three o'clock, but um, I do appreciate all of you being here. And uh, I look forward to the next time it's for April 11th. And uh, join me in the kitchen, the plant to, plant to platter kitchen again. Have a wonderful week.